Let's start things off by talking about the most basic type of random variable, but also one that's very important, as we'll see in later videos. So this is called the Bernoulli distribution. So we say that a random variable x is distributed. This is my thing for distributed, right, a little tilde. x is distributed as Bernoulli p, where p is something between 0 and 1 inclusive. Uh, we say that this is true if uh, x has this following definition. So we say that x is equal to, it can either take the value 1 or the value 0. So it has value 1. Uh, if we have a success, and value 0 if we have a failure. And furthermore, the probability of a success is p, and therefore the probability of a failure, the opposite of success, must be 1 minus p. So this is a very basic definition. All it's saying is that this random variable takes one of two values, either it takes 1 or 0, and it takes this value based on uh, whether we have a success or failure, which has probably p and 1 minus p respectively. Okay, so uh, success and failure can take many different uh, forms in the real world when we use this variable. For example, the most basic example is probably a coin flip. So if we call success heads, failure tails, then p would be one half, therefore 1 minus p would also be one half. So x equals 1 if we have a heads and x equals 0 if we have a tails. Very basic. Now let's talk about the probability mass function, PMF, of this random variable. So we say that the probability, this is my symbol for probability, this black fo a blackboard bold face uh, p here, x equals k, which is some real number, is equal to one of three things. It's either equal to p, 1 minus p, or 0. And what, when is it equal to these things in different cases? So we say that the probability that x is equal to k is p if k is equal to 1, 1 minus p if k is equal to 0, and 0 in all other cases. So we'll say otherwise. Now let's analyze this really quickly. So we're saying that the probability that x is equal to, let's say 1, is p. Does that make sense? Well, x is only equal to 1 if we have a success, which happens with probability p. So that's true. Now what about probability that x is equal to 0? That happens if we have a failure, probability 1 minus p, which is true. Now what if we try to plug in anything else for x? Let's say we plug in 2. Uh, sorry, we plug in something for k, which is 2. So what's the probability that x is equal to 2? Now we see that x can never be equal to 2 because it can only take the values 1 or 0 because that's uh, because we can only have a success or failure. We can't have anything outside that. So therefore, it's going to be 0 in all other cases. So this is a very basic probability mass function. And in fact, let me even label this. So we're going to be calling this the PMF, probability mass function. Uh, this is just the definition of what x is. Okay, we have that so far. Now we can go ahead and find the expected value and variance. So the expected value, if you remember, expected value of a random variable x is we basically find that, and since it's a discrete case, we can do it by, uh, we multiply each of the values this random variable takes by the probability that it takes that value. So in this case, we want to do, uh, since the only things it can take are 1 or 0, it's going to be 1 times the probability that x is equal to 1 plus 0 times the probability that x is equal to 0. Now we see that this term doesn't matter because it's 0 times something, so we get rid of that. Um, so really, it's just equal to the probability that x is equal to 1. And from our mass function, we see that is p. So the expected value is simply given by p. So that uh, this is also another name for mean. So in, in colloquial terms, we'll say that this is the mean of this Bernoulli random variable. So we can say mean here. Now the variance is a little uh, more involved, still not difficult. So we want to find the variance of x. If you remember from uh, your class, um, or if you don't, we can prove this in a later video possibly, it may be a lemma. We, the variance of random variable x is given by the expected value of the random variable x squared minus the expected value of x squared. Okay, so make sure you don't mix these up or else your variance will be negative um, or something like that. So it's the expected value of this random variable. This is a new random variable. It's not x, it's x squared. And this is the same random variable x, except we're taking the expected value first and then squaring it. Okay, so this we already know, right? This we found was p, so p squared here. Now this we need to think about, right? So x squared can take what values? Since x is a very simple form, it's easy to see that x squared can either be 1 or 0, right? There's nothing else it could be. When is it 1? It's only 1 if x equals 1, and x equals 1 with probability p. So uh, let's formalize this. So this is, uh, it's 1 times the probability that x squared equals 1, plus 0 times the probability that x squared equals 0, but that's 0 times something, so we won't even put it down. So what's the probability that x squared equals 1? It's the probability that x equals 1, right? And we said from up here, that's p. So this is just going to be equal to p. Okay, so in all, we have p minus p squared equals p times 1 minus p, and that is the variance. So let me box these results, maybe. 
so the variance here, uh, I'll write it again, it doesn't really have, it's called the variance. Um, so that's the variance of a random variable. Okay, so now the next thing we want to find is the moment generating function of this Bernoulli random variable. So if you remember how to do that, the definition of the moment generating function is expected value of e to the s x, where x is our random variable in question, here it's the Bernoulli, uh, s is some real number, and e is the mathematical constant e. So this looks a little bit daunting, and in general it can be a little bit difficult, but since we have such an easy random variable here, it's not so bad. First we just have to consider what this e to the s x can be. Well we said that x can either be 0 or 1, so that means e to the s x can either be e to the s 0 or e to the s 1. So it can either be e to the s 0, e to the s 1 e to the s1 is just e to the s, e to the s times 0 is just e to the 0, which is 1. So we have these two different values it can take, and now we just need to find the probability that it takes these values. So expected value of anything is just, we just write down the rote formula, right? So we have the probability that this e to the s x is equal to 1 times 1, plus the probability that this e to the s x is equal to e to the s, times e to the s, okay? Now what's the probability that e to the s x is equal to 1? Well we got that by saying x is 0, so this is the same as the probability that x is equal to 0. And what was that we said? That was 1 minus p times 1. Plus, now we have this e to the s, and e to the s x equals e to the s, we said we got that by saying that x is equal to 1. What's the probability that x is equal to 1? That we said is p. So we get this a um, little more complicated than before, but still very simple formula. We get 1 minus p plus p e to the power s. And that's the moment generating function. And we can do a sanity check if we just plug in 0. Because if we plug in 0 for s, we see that this whole term inside goes to 1. So the expected value of 1 must be 1. So if we plug in 0 here, we must also get 1. Do we get that? 1 minus p, p plus p e to the 0 is just 1 minus p plus p, which is 1. Okay, so uh, we are very confident this is correct. And in fact, it is. So here's our moment generating function of the Bernoulli uh, distribution. Um, so now I guess the last thing to talk about will just be how this is going to relate to different things in the future. Um, although you may be thinking this is not very interesting, this is such a boring random variable, this will prove very, very, very important in the future, uh, especially in the next video we'll talk about binomial random variable. We'll talk about how to solve problems um, and how to, find the dis how to find the mean and variance very quickly using the fact that binomial is a sum of independent Bernoullis, okay? So that's what we'll cover next.